Welcome to Bible on the Beach. I'm Ryan. I'm glad you can join us today. We'll be in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. We're actually up in the hills today behind my house because the surf sucks and it's really overcast. And uh, sometimes at the coast, uh, it's uh, foggy at the beach and I live about three miles. So it's just really sunny and beautiful. Glad you can be with us today. So last time in Bible on the Beach, we <clears throat> finished uh, with Paul's incredible missionary journey uh, into every space and every place that God would have them go. That's what God wants to do with our life. God literally wants to use our life to start a ripple effect so God's love can get into every nook and every cranny <clears throat> in every part of the world where people are hurting. And so when we stay in tune with the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> that enables us to be used by God every day, be the hands and feet for what God wants to get done in the world, showing people his love. So <clears throat> every time I open up the Bible, I always say, God, give me your eyes to see, <clears throat> give me your ears to hear, give me your heart to feel what you want to say to me today, and then help me to, to follow through on it. So <clears throat> here we are in the book of Ephesians. It starts in chapter one. It says, my dear friends, my name is Paul. I was chosen by God to be an apostle of Jesus, the Messiah. <clears throat> An apostle was an establisher of new works. Paul was called by God to pastor people and to plant churches and to proclaim the gospel. So Pauline theology or, or Paul's missiology is he would go into a new area, proclaim, publicly debate the person and work of Jesus, and in and through that experience, a new work a new expression of God's global family would be established. And so he had uh, an apostolic calling on his life, apostle in the New Testament phraseology and the New Testament meaning, as Paul uses it, means an establisher of a new network of churches. It's exactly what it means. It doesn't mean anything outside of that. <clears throat> Verse 2, he says, I'm writing this letter to all the devoted believers who have been made holy by being one with Jesus, the anointed one. <clears throat> so one of the manifestations of having a daily walk with Jesus is that you become holy. Now, the word holy means uh, set apart. And what that means is that you have a different character focus. You have a different lifestyle focus. You have a different love focus with your life. When you focus on loving others before yourself, you're becoming holy. When you focus on giving your body as an instrument to God in purity and holiness, you're becoming holy. When you focus your mind on the thoughts of God, on the things of God, you're becoming holy. What that means is that God is literally setting you apart, renewing your mind, giving you a different way of thinking in your daily life, in the life that you live, in the objectives that you're trying to accomplish. <clears throat> He says, may God himself, the heavenly father, the Lord Jesus, release grace over you and impart total well-being into your life. Now, we should pray every single day that God would give us his grace. God's grace is not getting what we do deserve. When we are loved by God and forgiven by God, it changes how we relate to God, changes how we relate to others. We don't walk in guilt and shame. We walk in grace and freedom and love and life. He says, may he impart total well-being into your lives. <clears throat> what God is trying to do in our life is to bring about full healing into every part of our life. Now, you're never fully healed until you go into heaven. And people think that you experience 100% healing here on earth. That's not true because there's different types of healing. There's spiritual healing, there's emotional healing, there's physical healing, there's relational healing. If you get healed physically in your life, doesn't mean you're healed emotionally. If you get healed emotionally, it doesn't mean you're healed spiritually. If you get healed, if you get healed relationally, it doesn't mean you're healed emotionally. So God is on a path of bringing a full healing into our life that is an incentive to stay humble and work hard every day in our life because every day that we stay humble and we work hard we get a little more healing and a little more grace 
into our life for us and for our family and for our friends and the people that we interact with on a daily basis. <clears throat> he follows it up by saying that every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly father. So in on earth, every day as we are humble and we work hard in our life, God gives us a little bit of a glimpse into a new area of our life where we experience more love, more blessing, more grace. Is what you had yesterday amazing? Yes. Is what you're going to have tomorrow more amazing? Absolutely. The Bible calls this hope. You see, when you follow Jesus, the hope of tomorrow gets stronger every day because it ultimately leads to heaven. And so our hope through the Holy Spirit is amplified, magnified, and multiplied every day of our life that we keep our hope and our focus on the Lord Jesus. He says, all because he sees us wrapped into Christ. That is why we celebrate him <clears throat> with all of our hearts. So Jesus sees us as we sit next to him in heaven one day. That's the picture that he has of us in our lives. That's why when the Holy Spirit is moving and telling you, go here, do this, talk to that person, don't do that, pray about this, relax, be patient, because Jesus has a perfect picture of us in heaven, seated with him in the heavenlies, and everything that Jesus thinks about us lines up with the picture that he has of us. And so we want to align with God's thoughts and his picture that he has for us. He says, and in love, he chose us before he laid the foundation of the universe. You see, God had a purpose and a plan for our life as we came into the world. And every day we humbly have to say, okay, Lord, whatever you want me to do today, I'll do your will, not my will. Even, think, even though I think I know your will, I'm still going to say ahead of time that I submit to your will <clears throat> and your plan. He says, because of his great love, he ordained us so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes with an unstained innocence. You see, <clears throat> as God sees us, it's with an unstained innocence. He sees us perfectly again as we're seated with him in heaven. For it was always his perfect plan to adopt us as his delightful children through our union with Jesus. So God adopts all of us. If you had perfect parents, unperfect parents, or no parents, we all experience the adoption of Jesus. Having perfect parents, unperfect parents, or even no parents, we're all an equal playing field when it comes to Jesus because Jesus adopts everyone as being our heavenly father. <clears throat> um, the anointed one, so that this tremendous love that cascades over us would glorify his grace. For the same love he has for the beloved Jesus, he has for us, and this unfolding plan brings him great pleasure. Did you know that God has <clears throat> an unfolding, amazing plan for our life? It's exciting. You know, if you knew everything that God was going to do in your life ahead of time, you'd be bored. The adventure is getting up every day and being humble and working hard and going after the things and the promises that God has asked and has planned for our lives. Thank you so much for joining me in Bible on the Beach today as we journey one day at a time through all of God's word. Until next time, I hope you have a